hello hello it's John Binney I wanted today to share in response to some of your questions uh, your feedback and recent interviews and also a beautiful increase in the number of people that are engaging with me as clients for my range of services um, so I wanted to give you a bit of an introduction, a reintroduction to me. Hi, I'm John Binney. We're a minute in and I'm reintroducing myself. So where do I start? Um, I'm going to start to kind of taking a snapshot just before my awakening. So when I was 40 years old, I had, so this was in 20. 17 November 2017 is when I had my awakening and what happened was I was at the time I was working at Amazon uh, in, in the in the corporate side of Amazon and I'd been there for a year and a half and I was a software development manager developing software in recruitment and at that time likely I had a small team in fact I had a really small team of about four people to manage which was amazing um, and uh oh I feel a sneeze come in and I also did a lot of music I would go along every every week to a local open mic night and play music mainly cover songs um, but I had started to write the odd create the odd song as well which was a lot of fun um, and then I'm going to flip you around because it's a really beautiful view and maybe this is what you'll get for the rest of the drive I don't know so we uh, we I <laughs> was invited by a friend to go to a, um, a, a, a like combined yoga and meditation session that they were running with a friend in fact they were running a sound bath and I was um, invited to go along to, to both and so I did this roundabout's just been rebuilt by the way it's so cool um, and yeah I'd never really meditated before I think I'd done like the odd kind of mindfulness um, what do you call it mind something app with a couple of people and it had quite vivid experiences of the meditation like I really enjoyed it but I never really found time does this sound familiar to you I never really found time to, to meditate and I just didn't I like I found it mildly interesting but I found it it was difficult for me to get into it so but when I went to my first in person like taught or guided meditation that's when I had my first awakening and what was really beautiful was it was at the village hall and I was just there yesterday in fact r reminiscing on my my awakening and it was a village hall where later I would find out that I had past lives in that um, in that area in this area so anyway, John back in 2017 was, I, I you know, I, my career had been focused on uh, growing my team sizes and my job title and my salary and the size of my home and maybe a more expensive car. And I was chasing happiness outside of me. But what I, I didn't, uh, I didn't really find it rewarding and in fact just before I joined Amazon I joined a company that I had a lot of challenges in and it was like it was a really kind of it was a tower moment for me it was a it was a rebirth of me so when I joined Amazon I was like ready to just you know restart in many respects my career although it was from a management position um, and so yeah, when I, I I seem to remember certainly the lead up to the first meditation session I did when I had my awakening, there were some precursors to it. Like I'd been hunting, I'd had an interest in ghost hunting and UFO hunting, um, a little bit about aliens themselves 
for, I feel like, since YouTube was born. I used to follow Project Camelot and uh, other, you know, uh, channels, any, anything that was interested in conspiracy, I was, I was hungry for. And when I joined uh, Amazon, it was quite a, especially to begin with, it was a very stabilizing influence on me, um, both in terms of financially and, and also with my family. And yeah, and I was, so I was doing music and things, whereas you know, previously I hadn't written a song in like 18 years. And although I'd been in cover bands where my kids were, were around the time they were born, uh, for about the five years uh, that covers when both of them were, were born, um, and they're now 18 and 15, that, yeah, I seem to remember I used to drink a lot, and uh, I, it's quite possible that I was uh, recovering a bit from a hangover. Lightly, I would have been drinking the night before the, the, the meditation session. Anyway, I went along to it, and although there are aspects of it, you know, it was a kundalini yoga session, but I didn't have a kundalini awakening. Um, I feel that if anything, I'd had that experience of the release of kundalini energy, this kind of rising of energy up through the spine and all the way up to the back of my head uh, during experiences with, um, uh, let's say, plant-based medicines, uh, or maybe not plant-based, but um, medicines that people would use and uh, their non-prescription that I'd done that when um, I was about 19, but there was very little kind of spiritual aspect to it, and I was very shut down. Like, I, I consider myself very shut down and, until about the age of 40. And so, in this meditation session itself, and I felt like it, a lot of the exercises and the, the kind of mantras and um, the location as well was really beautiful, it's very tranquil, really helped me focus. And so, when I started meditating, very vividly, and I remember it as clear as day to this day, is I saw the creation of planets and stars and the energies flowing between them. And just this whole energy first universe, and it just blew my mind. In fact, at the time, I didn't really, I wasn't really sure what they were, if there were planets or stars, I could just see these like spheres, and I could see the colors, and how the energy flows between them, almost like the stars were giving birth to planets and planets exchange energy with stars and yeah and, and more like nebulas and you know not just the spheres of planets and stars anywho I told my meditation teacher this is like can I this is amazing <laughs> um, I'd like to do this a lot and they said yeah you can just do this every day you know just just practice what we did so from what I remembered and there's just a few like simple exercises um, that I do just a couple before, well, literally two or three before I do a meditation. I just, I've continued that to this day. I remember meeting um, the meditation teacher a couple of times uh, since then and just sharing. I, I've been in touch and shared how it's transformed my life. And it's really funny, right? Because, you know, we don't know as practitioners the effects that we go on and have with people, but you can literally transform your life with someone's life with literally being there and holding space for and running a, a meditation or helping them get started in my case on a meditation practice and as I got into it I you can see we're stuck behind Laurie oh, we're just passing a standing stone actually a standing stone's coming up on the right um, yeah on the on the journey of beginning to meditate every day there's a few things that hit me one was I really struggled because I used to love whiskey. I mean, it's Scotland, right? And we have great whiskey. I used to love whiskey and I'd love beer. And so maybe I'd have like a few beers and, and one or two whiskeys or maybe more like in, in, a, in an evening or a night. And when it came to trying to meditate, um, my brain would be really cloudy and foggy and, and really, you know, I, I was used to mornings being a, a time of recovery. Um, and I, I was running. Um, each each morning, Monday to Friday, and I'd always have like a hot kind of bath uh, on a Saturday and Sunday. Still do, but it, you know they they weren't enough. 
to um, to be able to. That's really weird. A car was doing a U-turn thing. Okay. Um, see, it wasn't enough to like clear my mind, and my mind was still foggy. So I realised that I had to start, you know, slow, slowing down with drinking, and then also there was things like. I started to play more music and, and I really struggled that, you know, if I created a song while I was hungover, it was just didn't feel good and I don't think the song sounded good. Of course, I know a lot more about all that now. And then around, as, it, as I recall this, around uh, two to three weeks in, I began, I was aware of, I used to uh, follow Bridget Nielsen, she's still going on, on YouTube, um, I still follow her. And I, I remember two to three weeks in watching one of her videos and she, for me, was like a crossover from conspiracy and aliens into the spiritual aspects. And, oh, we're just passing um, Tinningham, which is a really beautiful little village along here. There's beautiful woods around here. So, yeah, Bridget, I remember, was talking about spirit guides and which which I found fascinating, you know. I remember thinking, who are spirit guides? What are they? Who has them? Like, does everyone have them? And it seemed like the answer was that everyone has them, and that we all get to, you know, the option to, to talk to them, or, or you know, first of all, to believe in them, um, or you know, suspend belief and then and then ask to talk to them. And so. Initially, I started asking my spirit guides to show themselves to me and to be fair to them That's exactly what they started to do. And so even though I'd had like You know, I, I didn't even know at that point what a chakra was. I didn't even know what um, These different aspects of consciousness are or our third eye. I think I'd heard of a third eye I didn't really know what it was really um like there was a band called Third Eye Blind or something like and I remember knowing about the concept of a third eye, but I didn't understand anything about any of these things. Uh, so there I was in what was likely later in November 2017 going into December, I started, when I asked my guides to show themselves, I'd start to see visuals and colors and I remember quite a lot, see like this little donut shape, maybe not quite a complete donut. Um, and I would feel things, I would feel on my arm or on my leg or like a twinge in my stomach or like a feeling in my heart or sometimes it was a sound outside and or, or a feeling of someone next to me and I remember thinking, you know, this only happens at the exact moment that I say, guys, show yourself to me like that's when I receive these signs even though the signs themselves uh, change and one uh, one thing I think I was doing that I got right without really knowing it was that I would say out loud, I'd say, wow, thank you, thank you so much. And that's so critical to 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 my journey was, and still is, it's like I always, you know, always, always, always thank whoever you've asked um, because they're tuning into you, right? They're tuning into you, you're tuning into them. And it's literally like having a conversation saying, yes, I hear you. Yes, I hear you. And so, you know, if someone knows that they can, uh, that you can hear them, then they'll continue to talk to you, right? And now we're coming up on the beautiful little village. Is it a village? Is it that big? Uh, called Whitekirk. Um, it's a really beautiful place. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> what, what happened after that was, I'm not sure what changed. But I just decided to start asking for um, messages. So I'd ask my spirit guides, "Hey, can I ask for um, can I ask for a message for a song today?" And I, oh, that, sorry, I didn't quite start like that. I asked for messages, and the message would come through as love. I remember, you know, like a word or a feeling. And I remember, I remember, I would meditate, and then I'd write music. And so it became more obvious to me that maybe I should ask for uh, a message for a song and then write the song about it. And that just seemed to go really fast for me. 
um, I began taking these messages from my guides and creating songs on them really quite quickly after my awakening. Um, it would have been within, you know, a month to six weeks that I had started doing this. And it was I was in touch with one of my guides. Um, there was also other significant things when I look back um, that I didn't understand at the time, which was I was meditating in a in what was a quite a large uh, double garage, certainly large for Scottish terms, um, and it was com it was kind of largely converted, well, not fully, but largely converted into a Zumba dance studio, and I'd just bought the, the house or we just bought the house and we took I took it over as a music studio so it's completely separate from the house it was largely quiet although a lot of outside noise came in through the garage doors which were not like super well soundproofed um, I'm sure my neighbors loved me creating almost 100 albums there and um, I remember there was also a wall of mirrors in front of me and that's quite significant that meditating in front of a mirror every day was really a fascinating experience because I would I would look at myself I wouldn't you know something called scrying where where you you stare at yourself and you talk to yourself and you go into like a meditation about it and ask to see different aspects of yourself um, but yeah uh, that seemed really helpful especially when I started to have remembrances of past lives and I would see different faces in the mirror before or after my meditation. So, forward wind, 900 days of, of doing this, uh, of meditating each day and asking for messages every day, I, I just had this, uh, this moment, this kind of epiphany, which was, I think I finally accept, or, or I know I finally accept that I am channeling these messages from my guides, that I am one of these people that channels messages. And... Now, the reality was, I'd been doing it since, you know, uh, about five songs in, <laughs> you know, or the first song I did it, but only after 900 times did I, did I fully accept and know that John, all by himself, couldn't do, um, couldn't do this by himself and without his guides, so there's this little pigeon on the road. Um, that I must be tapping into like higher, uh, higher aspects of myself and my guides, and I also started. It must have been around that time I started creating the Hi, it's John daily videos, and they also became part of my ritual. And this is the feedback loop, right? So, as we're fighting on this today, the feedback loops are so critical to what we do. So, if you um, and just keep an eye on for the views. I don't know how much you'll pick up, but it's just beautiful as you come into the town of Berwick. Um, yeah, the feedback loop. So what happened is I meditate. So I go for a run, come back, do some uh, kind of yoga and Pilates moves, just a few, like not and not a huge amount. And I include those in my my higher self foundational training because it's a bit embarrassing my my videos of it of me doing it, um, but. But movement, I do feel, is important prior, a little bit of movement prior to your meditation is very helpful to, to move energy. And then I do the meditation, and when my guides, when I ask for a message, so I say, guides, higher self, and source, big tractor, um, what messages do you have for me today for the highest good love and compassion of all? That's when the message comes through, and um, I just allow this... Uh, to come in and as, as the message comes in I speak it out loud so whatever comes in even if it doesn't make sense to me uh, I would say very often it's a new concept to me um, sometimes I ask them to repeat it or to expand on it but in summary I just allow we're stopping to allow, the, to allow these uh, wolf rising coaches to to park or to go somewhere um, and we're just passing Tan Town, uh, Tan Town Castle, which I wish I could show you. I don't know if you caught a glimpse of it before. Oh, they're struggling to get in. Um, so yeah, that feedback loop of doing the meditation, and then what happens is I go for a shower, breakfast, come back, 
And because I've spoken the meditation out loud, I then do my Hi, It's John video and I say what came through in meditation. And regardless of how I've branded those short one minute videos, um, they're always the message from my guides. You know, even if I'm just saying, breathe with me and then describing something. And so it's always coming from a higher, um, higher aspect. And, and I love that. Then once I have that, so I never write anything down. Um, it's just not me. <laughs> uh, once I've done that, I then go on and um, record the song. And it's really funny because they're they're all how to describe it. They're they're all complementary to each other and they're all expansive. So in the meditation itself, when I receive the channeled message, it's not being integrated yet, right? And then when the when I speak it out loud, it becomes integrated with this. It, firstly, with this three D reality, like my voice is speaking it into this dimension. And then when I do the video later and I go back to it, it's like my conscious mind and my ego uh, is, is fully understanding at least the concept of it. And then I, I love the fact that it's, you know, these like uh, stories on Instagram and shorts on YouTube are limited to a minute because it forces me to be concise. But I never get to the same depth as, as I receive in, in, in the meditation, well, rarely. Um, and then the song is just a beautiful way to expand. So I don't write down the song, I just sing it. And there's a video of me somewhere, I think it's about, how, it's like how to break a world record in you know, the most number of albums or something, um, which I held in 2022 and 2023. And maybe I still do if I would reapplied, but as uh, someone else, um, uh, at least got the next the next number of albums um, and yeah after that uh, I also started expanding out into what I started calling darkness clearing so focusing on removing negative energies and entities and I just started learning on the job like I've, until quite and well until the last kind of year I've had friction and an aversion to doing anything like learning from others, being taught by others. And it's just like, I feel it's because of lack of, well, there's a number of reasons, but one of them is a lack of transparency of, of other teachers. It just, I find I really, I really struggle with it. You know, if great, if someone just wants to make lots of money, fantastic, you know, go for it. Uh, if someone wants to change the world, you know, whatever you choose, go for it but please be transparent. Um, and then also just, I had this huge desire to be autonomous and to learn myself. So we're just coming into the, the town of North Berwick where I grew up. Um, and we just have a few more minutes, so I'm just gonna, just gonna cover this off. So yeah, the, what, what was fascinating about that journey, and you see the little hill up on the, the left, uh, which is a, a volcanic plug, um, and there's many islands around here. Anyway, that's North America. Uh, but I want, I really enjoyed learning on the job. So I would do two sessions a week. I always tried to like find people, volunteers to do the, um, to do the sessions. So it'd be one hour each. I started with a little, uh, they're called like milkshake websites, um, where it's just like almost like two or three pages. You could, it was just a show like, you know, my face and have like an email where you could contact me and being, um, coming from a technical background, I, I also like did some simple integration with, uh, I think it was Stripe payments and, um, and so when people would contact me, I would just go ahead and like create a, a Zoom booking and stuff. Um, I did that and as I, as I did these sessions, every session taught, and it still does, like taught me more and more and what I also loved about it was it's so important to, you know, even though I was so busy and at that time, so we're now talking like 2019 um, or so, like what, what was happening to me was I was super, super busy at work and I wasn't that far away, just a few years away from burning out. Um, 
and so things were getting uh, busier and busier and bigger um, you know my teams were bigger the hours I was working was bigger I was earning more money I'd got a promotion um, but yeah I I would do these intense working days of about 12 hours and then I'd race home and do like a an online session with someone and I think you even like there's some sessions including like some live videos or podcasts I've done with with people where you see me going oh I just had a really busy day at work and you can tell I'm like you know quite um quite agitated by the whole thing but as soon as I go in and set up a safe space I then like just really enjoy um you know the, the rest of the session and and I'd love that and it felt quite for me it felt still does feel quite rebellious and I quite enjoyed doing it, it late at night and I remember my wife um, was was quite initially quite bemused she was like what is this you're doing um, and I was saying oh I'm doing like I guess I describe it like meditations with people and then I'd eventually describe it as like energy healing and then now like more of a mix of energy healing and meditations and, and psychic work and I guess it's always been all those things, but I've just been expanding out. Um, and then, oh, here's the primary school I went to school at. Uh, or one of the primary schools I went to. We moved around the country quite a lot. So, yeah, that was just a great way to learn on the job. And it's really funny, I would describe almost all the, the things that I teach in the higher self foundational training are these things that I've just learned on the job well I mean it's the same for the intermediate training too there are some people that I've connected with on my journey that have been in their membership groups um, I've never been on is this true I'm just checking have I ever been on a any kind of psychic training course no I've not um, I've been in membership group sessions where I've been on astral missions with others and I've booked sessions with people not many um, maybe 10 over over the years so maybe do like a couple of years or something um, so anyway it's just to give an indication of how, how I learned but yeah it I would I would say it's there's lots of benefits to learning by yourself because you learn um, you know learning on the job it's always like you have this kind of where you do have this like evidential physical thing that happens like if I had been taking notes and I've recorded almost every single client session I've done you know hundreds of them um, if I'd taken notes and said what did I you know when did I learn how to do a soul retrieval like you could look back in the videos and now what I, what I do is I tend to put them in my video titles and um, AI is fantastic because you, know, you can transcribe your videos and find out more about these things because I feel like just like this video that our journeys are, are just so important um, so I'm, I'm just flipping the camera around so I don't want to give the location away about where I'm going um, uh, visiting someone so yeah that's my journey I just kept going and yes I qualified as a meditation teacher last year and then this year as a clinical reflexologist these were um, you know they were designed for me to be able to step into um, uh, more physical modalities you know so to be able to do things more face to face with people and have credentials that people would um, understand because when everything's that's the other downside of learning everything yourself is that humans typically love things outside of themselves as a reference point that they can then say oh I do this thing I have this thing I have this object outside of me you know I must be good because I have this thing outside of me whereas the reality is for me I've always been obsessed about what's inside because I feel like everything you need is is within you which is great news so yeah that's that's me really um, that's me you know I left my corporate job in um, May 30th was the end of my contract and May 31st is when I started um, my company Heart, Se Heart Centered Wellness and it's been an incredible journey and it won't be long until I'm posting yet another video that says um, you know how each 
I give a little reflection of how each month's been going. But yeah, it's, it's a really beautiful, very powerful journey and much, much more fun and much more exciting than I could have imagined. So yeah, if you have any questions for me about my journey, um, about my, my growth, um, about my future, uh, whatever it is, um, I'd love to, love to answer your questions. Just try not to reverse into these trees too much. Okay, well, thank you so much. Take care. Sending love. Hello. So I thought I was, <laughs> you probably heard me saying, sending love um, from Scotland. So I decided to create a second part to this video and probably join it on as one video. And that is, to, wow, this microphone's really close. Excuse me. Um, that is to share a bit more about my my journey. So I really took you up until like doing, I spent a lot of time talking about meditation and developing my abilities. And I spoke about, um, I think just I kind of ended saying, oh yeah, and I started my own business. And I'm also remembering I told you about meditation and, and reflexology. And so the, I wanted to explain a bit more about my journey since. So what happened? Um, oh, it's a feather. Thank you for the feather, for the sign. The, uh, and I'll flip you around because the view is beautiful here. Yeah, the journey of me like transitioning out of my corporate job. Where do I start? <laughs> First of all, I was really scared. And so I do feel that subconsciously I didn't feel safe to, to think about it um, consciously or to make plans. And so that, that was definitely an aspect. And then, oh, some guys cutting back trees and then some cyclists and another car. So I'll just wait um, and not go under the tree that's having branches taken off. Um, so yeah, I, if I rewind the clock back to, as I was start, as I was doing this as a hobby of doing like energy clearing and, and healing for people in, in sessions, a couple of, a couple of sessions a week. Um, what uh, what started to develop was this sense of well, I can I could see other people doing it as a, as a job. I could see other people starting to build businesses doing this, and that was you know what to those people, and you know who you are um, that I witnessed doing that. It was very helpful because it showed me that um, even if someone was hungry for money alone, that they could you know, make enough money to live off doing this. And around that time also like TikTok was taking off. And um, I guess the, uh, is this coming up for four years ago now, but the, um, that big pandemic thing that happened, that was a huge benefit to me in many respects. Um, one was that the, uh, I'll just flip you around since it's like boring traffic for a bit. Um, one was that it gave me like a real deepening. So it strengthened my um, connection with my family. We, we became far, far closer. Uh, it helped me go inwards in my meditation. I got more time to meditate. I also got more time to create music, excuse me, instead of traveling into work in the morning. My mornings felt much freer and more, um, you know, liberated even when I remember having very vivid memories of like doing like a vice president meeting that day or you know seeing someone that was very very important that in in my in my work world that um, I although I was intimidated by them and fearful of them and worried about whether I would have you know written uh, made enough progress and then articulated it well enough in, in the work that my team and I did that I still managed to have you know I put time aside to to create music each day you know meditate meditate every day create music every day and then so that was between that it's about an hour and maybe 15 minutes um, including like publishing the video and all that kind of stuff and that I also it 
you know, one one thing that's not super obvious to everyone, uh, but as you remember this, is that not everyone knew how to video conference and stuff. It wasn't really a huge part of uh, maybe FaceTime was on, on Apple and stuff back then, but it wasn't as common as it, as it became. And um, so that was great for me because, you know, everyone was getting used to connecting with their friends and family over video conferencing like, like Zoom. And so when I just said, hey, I want to do a Zoom call with you, people were quite used to it. You know, they'd at least had some experience of it or knew that others did it and that it was, that it was increasingly commonplace. Um, I, I decided to go part-time in my job. So I was working five days a week and, you know, <laughs> I don't know how many hours, 70, 80 hours a week. It's so hard, so hard to know. And I, I didn't work weekends and that was good, but my weekends were literally just sleeping. Uh, you know, I'd either be, I'd often get up early, but I would be napping uh, during the day, I'd spend time with the family, and like that was it. I, there was there was no real. I'd do music, but there was no. There was, there was still a lack of, of joy in, in in my life. Um, and you know, you don't really know what you're missing, right? Uh, especially when you haven't done it for for decades. Like, um, but at that point, I hadn't been in a band for well over like 10, 10 plus years and I had, I'd lost, oh, this bus is flashing me, um, I can flip you around again, uh, I, I just lost my way in, in, in my business and I just became disenfranchised with um, this kind of capitalist society, right? Like, I started to become dis. I was disenfranchised with, or disconnected with. I had a big house. I had a six, or we had a six-bedroom house, which is really big for Scotland. <laughs> um, big double garage, which is fantastic for for music. It was converted as a dance studio. The we had a, a fairly modest car for for my income. Um, my income was very large, as as you can imagine. And I also got a lot of bonuses. Uh, they came in the form of shares, and these would um, these when when these came up, it was it always felt like a bonus. So we would, you know, spend it on. Um, often I felt like I was spending it on things to try and make me happy. And I remember watching uh, my carpet, carpet, Tony and his family in Canada. Uh, listening to his podcast about he how he was the first person I came across who lived in a van um, and that he and his family lived in a, a modest sized van and they would spend their days you know just traveling around living a, a free life I don't mean free of charge but, you know with with, with a, a, actual freedom or as close you can get to it and um, but that was really beautiful and it started to I started to have conversations with my wife um, about, you know, maybe we should get a caravan. Uh, or, or I think initially I said, maybe get a camper van, but I don't know, they're a lot more money. And they, uh, I might be a bit scared driving it. And so that's when we decided to, to start with the caravan. And what I'd find is that I'd be racing home, uh, or sorry, I'd already be at home, uh, working from home and then I would especially on a Friday even when we did work in an office and I'd be you know racing to finish at the end of the day often like seven I think seven o'clock would be an early finish um, often later the meetings would overrun and escalations would happen and all these things you just had to do and uh, I I started to realize that there was this life. I could have like I could have a life. That there was joy. This camping was a really beautiful hobby. It brought us so close together, you know, physically as a as a family, the, the four of us. Um, and and so that that was also part of this journey of uh, going going part time. Like I wanted I wanted more time for the joyous things in my life. And so if you're listening to this and you're, you don't spend any time in, in your, or any energy in, in your, your week, 
following your joy, then my suggestion is you start with like at least 10 minutes. You know, maybe that 10 minutes is a meditation each day. Uh, maybe you're spending an hour doing something fun like a hobby each week. And the ener- I describe the energetics of that for me is that even when I was the most stressed, I knew that what wasn't going to happen to me was that I was going to, you know, uh, what's the worst case scenario, become, you know, so stressed out, burnt out, that I would, you know, do something terrible to myself. Um, or, or my body would have a mutiny and say, no, John, you're not allowed to do this anymore. Uh, you know, it's killing us. And, and I saw a lot of people around me um, really struggling with their, their health. And I, what scared me was that I'd become so hardened to stress. I could take huge amounts of it. And and cope relatively well, especially compared to others that hadn't been in the company as long. And I would, uh, but people around me really struggled. And I don't say that with any pride. I say that with, you know, acceptance of the difference in me. And I was, you know, it's not a healthy thing to be hardened to stress. You know, you become harder as a person. And that definitely happened to very various degrees. So I remember saying to, I remember there was another manager who was part time, um, and I said to my wife, "Why don't I ask to go part time?" And, and she was like, "Well, you know, it's going to have to, it's going to be a drop in our income, you know, like a forty percent drop uh, if you if you go down to three days." And I said, "Oh, I don't know about three days. Maybe I'll just go to four days." And they said, "Well," my wife said, "Well, what about three days? Because it might just end up being four anyway." Um, so, so I did, and I asked my boss at the time, and uh, I, I was shocked when he said yes. And in some respects, I was also really nervous because I was like, "Oh wow, a forty percent drop, you know, uh, in my in my income is is huge." Uh, and I didn't know if we'd be able to stay in the same home or not. Um, so, so anyway, I did it, and I said, "Look, I'm going to do." I was pretty transparent. I said, oh, I'm going to do meditation and explore things like reflexology or training in these different things. And I said, it's too hard to do my full-time job and explore these things, which is also true. Um, so I did that. And at work, like things shifted quite dramatically, quite quickly. And one of the things my boss said is, I will, I will happily make you part-time but I'm going to hire someone into your job and then over time you can just figure out what else you want to do. And I, yeah, and in the two years that I I stayed in job, I never uh, purposefully transferred job. I was just um, made to (laughs) several times. But I increasingly was accepting of of this um, because... I was busy building my own, you know, my exit strategy, if you like. Not really a plan, but a strategy. Anyway, last summer, so 2023 in the summer, I realized that it was likely going to be inevitable. I just didn't know when and how many months or years I would do this kind of spiritual stuff um, full time. And so I decided that I would uh, take you know, start to do sessions and just see, try different things. I created a membership group and my Wix website, people can book things. I started investing money in it. I think in that, in 2023, I must have spent like 800 pounds on my web. You know, I built my website, but you know, on the, the, the hosting costs, the licensing, the domain names, my mailing system, my Zoom uh, fees, all these things. And it was important to me especially whilst I had a salary, was that I invested in, I wanted to make it as realistic as I could so that, um, to get a feel for what it'd be like doing that job, you know, rather than just do do the cheap alternative for everything. If anything, I took the expensive alternative for everything. And that really helped me because it helped me realize, oh, someone could just book me on the website. Uh, They can find out when I'm free from the website. Um, That when they do, it books the time in my calendar. It 
creates a Zoom link. And I even found this, this service that copies the Zoom video at the end of this, the session, uploads it onto YouTube for me, and then all I need to do, and it's private, and then all I need to do is like share that with my, my clients afterwards. So all that automation steps are really important to me. There's something that happened to me, you know, my, my darkest shadow work, if you like, some of my darkest moments happened last summer when I pushed too hard. I felt this lack of money down that path and it started to breed within me this really horrible um, behaviors and, and feelings which were that I was, um, I was uh, really like I wasn't going to be successful at either. You know, I was going to both be unhappy at my job at Amazon and then I was also going to be unhappy trying this, this, this new job of doing energy healings and readings for people. And I, I worried, I found the sessions very draining initially. The, my client sessions, I used to only be able to do one or two a week, you know, and I felt drained. I needed, I, I figured out that I needed like two days between each one. And, you know, how do you make a business out of that? Like, I'd have to charge them so much. <laughs> um, and of course, that, that improved over time, but I, I realized that something deep, deep within me needed to change. And, and so there's a whole different video. You can search it up uh, on YouTube. It's called, you just look for John Binney's Deepest, Darkest Shadow Work. I think it's also in podcast format uh, on Spotify, etc. So you can listen to that whole experience in, in, in detail. And I was keen to make it public because I want people to see that journey within me because uh, it helps people understand where I came from um, and also, you know, not everyone needs to go through these same experiences, right? And, and, and of course, I hope you don't have to go through these, but these were powerful soul lessons for me. I experienced such growth. The biggest lesson it taught me was that I need to practice self-love, that self-love is the key to my abundance. And I know that if I hadn't have gone through that journey and I took several months off, and then started again. And I, one of the things I started doing was like creating a bit of a vision for myself. I started thinking, you know, what what are the things I'd offer to people? Uh, even a sense of like how much would I charge initially? Um, how many? I, I started doing like that kind of back of the notebook, you know, calculations or napkin calculations in my head. Like if I did somewhere between two and four sessions a day, Monday to Friday, would that be enough to to pay, you know, my mortgage at the time and all my bills? And, I, and the, you know, my wife only worked, um, or at the time worked two or three days a week. So it's like, uh, I was the main wage earner as well. So all those things are going through my head. Um, so there's a lot of fear. And then eventually I went on this meditation training session and when I met other people physically, and I, I guess I, I felt like I came out psychically. It's like, hi, I'm John Binney, and I'm psychic. Uh, came, that I came out in, in that session in, in September of last year. That um, I really felt strong bonds with these people, and they were very accepting of me. But not only that, I saw people, I met for the first time, people doing not totally the similar work uh, whether it was counseling or massage or um, psychotherapy or whatever they were doing, that these people um, have make a living doing these things. And that was really fascinating to me. And so what happened was I began to make plans. Like, and by the end of the training, I just said, so I'd said this in the class as well, and, and of course in the training itself, five days uh, full-time you know training course of, of meditation by the end of that I knew that I had to leave my corporate job and it's a matter of when and I began those conversations with my wife who of course understandably would be terrified initially and especially knowing me because I once I decide something I, there's no stopping me and you know my tenacity is you know one of my superpowers but also one of my you know my Achilles heels and so, yeah, I went on that journey. Uh, the mindfulness meditation really, really helped me. And a little bit later in October time, I started clinical reflexology. 
that had like a kind of layering effect and it was it was fantastic and in many respects that's what I was missing in the journey of my business is I didn't really realize that I had to do these that I John not because my business needed me to but because I needed to for myself do in-person work um, the in-person work for me brings me closer to my physical body closer to my self-love and of course closer to my clients and I found that really really beautiful so eventually uh, this this year in January I resigned from my corporate job and said hey I'm gonna leave by the end of this year so I was gonna leave by December so obviously that December has not happened yet right I, I would in that timeline I'd still be there at the company oh I don't know how I would have survived I'm not sure if I would have survived um, and then lots of changes started happening across the company and I was in this conversation with my manager and I just said well if my job security is in question and uh, you know I have the intention to leave maybe you could make me redundant where they you know they pay you off to, to leave and leave sooner and uh, so, so that's what happened um, just a couple months later in fact I was out in the US uh, traveling with business while they, they did the call with me and I was it's just so funny right they're saying oh I'm really sorry but you know you're going through the motions you know my manager is just fantastic and saying you know I have to uh, we're going to make you redundant and of course I was so happy and I remember them messaging me afterwards saying I think that's a really good deal you got that's so good and I was like I know it's like I got and what was phenomenal was that um, it was a big help financially because we had a lot of things to do. We had a, we owned a holiday house at the time, which we've been putting a lot of time and energy into. Um, and a, we had a mortgage uh, on our home and we decided to sell the holiday home. To, and a lot of this was like simplifying everything as we went, we even sold our car. And now just have a camper van, which you, you see me driving in just now. So that's my, our, our only vehicle. Um, and yeah, I began gearing up to, to 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 leaving my corporate job. I left physically. I left the office at the end of April um, in Edinburgh and had this beautiful couple of hours, this like celebration with people during the day, which is very generous. And we had food and pizza, and and we left. Uh, and they'd written a song about me, and oh, it was just so beautiful to to hear. And then after I left. Um, I had another month of, of, of leave, which is where I could, they were still paying me, but I couldn't work for another company. And then the next day, so I timed it so that the very next day after I left that contract, I started Heart Center Wellness Limited. And so now, I know my journey, and you, you've heard of some of the things I offer, but you know, to, to summarize now, I'm now in running my own business. Um, I have no other forms of income. Um, I I was just checking on that. That's right. I don't <laughs> uh, like. I don't you know, receive any benefits from the government or anything like that. And I um, hired a finance company, you know, an accountant company to help me with my, my books, understand my tax and the laws about these things and what you can claim and what you can't and, and all these things. In fact, I uh, I did struggle a bit with my first. Um, finance company they weren't like or accounts a company that weren't um, an amazing fit for me I, I needed a lot of help uh, from the very basics so I found a company that could do that and they've just been fantastic and you know who you are if you're listening um, you just take me through every transaction that I do everything every amount that comes in and yeah just some really beautiful experiences you know in my first month in June so this is prior to you know, my first year of really having a like a conceptual business as a hobby, um, and I, I, you know, if you're if you work for for the tax guys, and this is also the truth that uh, in the first year, I that less than a thousand pounds came in, and after my costs was was even less. You know, my costs were about you know eight hundred pounds. Um, but you know, I, I I managed to just cover my costs. And then when I left my job, um, I remember my sales in the first like trade month of trading in June, uh, they went up by 68%. 
and then the next month in July they went up by a hundred percent and then in August another hundred percent and I, I don't know what September looks like because um, I've not really looked at it in, in, in detail um, and the percentages are helpful because I don't like, I literally don't know how much money I, I would personally earn from it and I'm not sure of the revenue until until I've done a few months of uh, trading to figure it all out but um, I see already and I'm now in we're now just completing September so I've done June July August September four months I can see it's a viable business and I can see that it the money coming in is, is, is ever increasing and all those times just like when I in the online stuff has always been uh, you know it's, it's it's easier you don't have to hire a venue or anything you don't have to have office space um, that's always been much more profitable but at the same time I, I, John needs to do this in person stuff so doing the in person stuff is like has been starting a new aspect of my business and the way I do these things I just think oh, I'm just trying something new like I tried it's like doing being a meditation teacher doing reflexology doing massage like you're just trying these things out and learning how much you like them and if you really like them they can become part of your business right and so I really like doing reflexology and so that's become part of my business it has to be in person and I, I moved um, my practice to this new well-being center called Naked Revive in Haddington, which is a nearby town where I live, and that's just been phenomenal. Um, and it was literally, you know, uh, empty days. The first days I booked, there was no bookings. Um, and it's how you build a business, right? You have to start from scratch. And whilst that, you know, you have to hold your nerve through it, and and you know. I start, you know, invested the time I had when I was there doing advertising and, and, and then creating an in-person event. Like, there's always a reason for these things. The in-person event, you know, after having no bookings, I went to being able to get 12 people to sign up for my in-person event and got my friend uh, Natasha to, uh, to co-host it with me, uh, in part for moral support, but also she's fantastic. Um, and uh, that was incredible. We've already got another uh, in-person session coming up. And my training course, you know, I've run the, the higher, higher self foundational training, um, has begun, I've run it, I'll be running it the fifth time now this year. Uh, the intermediate training course just finished. Taking everyone all the way from the, the very early stages of starting to meditate through to um, being able to then get on and uh, and do you know meet with your spirit guides and um, talk to other beings and channel other beings and do all kinds of incredible things um, and the intermediate training course is way way more advanced and teaches everything I know and teaches you how to do these things for others. Um, that's just been an incredible journey and I'm also looking into uh, going to the US at least for a couple of times it's where still most of my customers are but they're asking to meet um, and some look like they may be willing to help either either they'll pay for tickets for a retreat and I'm organizing that with one of my customers um, or also looking at um, uh, just visiting uh, clients as well so yeah these are just fantastic you know things that lie ahead and I know like just yesterday my my live streams this was a big game changer for me like going on going live twice a week for two hours each each time um, doing doing live streams for people where I was doing healings and clearings and yesterday I mean it's grown so much over the, over the recent months it must have been close to 318 people that came in and out of the, the two-hour session and we spotted concurrency so the number of people in at the same time at 65 and it blows my mind um, literally having gone from 
you know, almost zero, like just, you know, less than five to begin with. And for me, it's not about, you know, being super successful and in the eyes of social media and all their algorithms. For me, it's more like, more about having flexibility in my life. Like today, I just took the day off. Um, and feeling liberated and doing all the things that my, my family love um, and spending time with them. And so, yeah, it's just continues to be. So if you're watching this and thinking, hey, should I make the leap and follow my dreams? Do it, do it right now. <laughs> the universe is not conspiring to, um, to harm you. It's conspiring to help you. So this is me reintroducing myself and I'm just arriving at home and sending you so much love. I hope this, you find this helpful. If you have any questions, um, please contact me. You can see all my services and all my offerings on johnbinney at johnbinney.com and my website. And I look forward to any questions or any suggestions you have for future videos. Sending so much love. Take care.